Go Interactive with Fiona. What do you think about this wall behind me? I think it's okay, as far as concrete walls go, but it could use a little sprucing up. And that's exactly what we're doing today with the Nanaimo Arts Council. It's a collaborative tile mosaic project. We're calling it like a tile mosaic quilt, and people are making uh, six by six inch uh, squares that have all manner of stuff on them. There's tiles, there's glass, there's stones, there's beads, there's old jewelry, um, bits of metal, bits of glass, anything can really go into these uh, projects and it's really an assemblage of stuff. This is Sarah, the Executive Director of the Nanaimo Arts Council. Now Sarah's gonna help me make my mosaic tile. Yes. I've got some pieces here that I really like. I think they're a little big. A little big. What would you yes. suggest? Well, let's smash them up and make them smaller. I like your thinking, Sarah. <laughs> This is the best part. Now, how many pieces this size would I normally need to fill up a square like this? I have absolutely no idea. It's a very organic process because you, you, you're not necessarily going to fill it just like this. You're going to have feature piece, highlighted pieces. So what you're saying is no. no chip. What you're saying is no rules really, right? Exactly. I like very the organic. sounds of that. Very organic. <laughs> So how do we get started here? Do I just take this glue and smear it all over or? Well, some people start with a pattern and draw the pattern on and okay. then fill it in. Other people just sort of randomly, some people place things on and yeah. like me and go, oh, that's not very good and start again. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can, I don't know if you're gonna start with a border. I was thinking that actually. I think we're on the same wavelength here. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just start with a border. Okay. And this is just like a white glue. Mm -hmm. It's nice and that you it... can move them around a little bit too. We're not locked yeah. into this design as soon as the piece goes on. Well, it's usually got some weight to it and it's got some texture to it. I like to do pieces that have texture, like, like they're rarely just one level, like flat. This is a very forgiving art form, it seems yes. like. Yeah. Yes. Well, you, there's many different ways of doing it. You can be extremely uh, rigid mm -hmm. and precise, and then you can be really freeform. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's got a dis different artistic process. As I say, some people draw their picture out mm -hmm. and then create, look for things to create it. You can cut the tiles, which I haven't mastered yet, oh, to okay. make them curved. And Maybe a little more precise than the smashing we were doing earlier. Yeah, just, Perhaps. just, just a bit. Yeah. Although the smashing is just so much fun. It is. <laughs> I do find that it's there's such a variety, like I, you know, with the metal and glass and different kinds of jewelry. And interesting that everyone today was given more or less the same materials and they've all come out completely, completely different. different. Yeah, I like that. I think I should have put more glue on. <laughs> but actually, this frame is looking quite interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're going to frame. Neither am I. I've got things in uh, the one that I made that I dug out of my father's workshop. People mention that they bring, they've got old bits of jewelry and sometimes there's old china that maybe was somebody's grandmother's or jewelry that was special to someone. So. The final installation, once all the, the pieces are in, mm -hmm. will um, be covered with epoxy. Okay. And so people can't come and pick the tiles off. Mm -hmm. So that'll last a really long time. Yeah. This could be up for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm, uh, maybe. <laughs> I just hope that people enjoy looking at it. We'll keep it low enough so that people can touch it. We want, you know, it's, a, it's perfectly touchable. I hope it will inspire people to maybe go home and um, do something themselves to beautify their space. My finished mosaic tile and all of the other mosaic tiles that were made today are going to be on this wall at the end of October, right by the China Steps. So if you'd like to check them out, Walk on down and have a look. For Go On Shaw TV, I'm Fiona Shedden. Today we're celebrating the Qualicum Commons celebration. It's uh, an opportunity for the community to really find out what's been happening at Qualicum Commons. Last year it was closed, it was Qualicum Beach Elementary School. And, um, and now we're operating as Qualicum Commons. We have a lot of tenants here that are offering a whole array of services. Uh, we have the SOS, uh, Society of Organized Services, and they provide uh, a whole multitude of services to the community. I, I'm with Regional District of Nanaimo, Recreation and Parks, 
and we have a lot of children's, uh, youth, and uh, seniors programs that are happening, including first aid classes, we have Lego programs, open gym, uh, so we're trying to appeal to a, a wide age range. Um, some of the other tenants that are here are the Qualicum Beach School of Dance. Uh, we have Building Learning Together is operating Munchkinland. Uh, Keep is here, it's the um, uh, distance learning with the school district. The Children's Discovery Centre is also here. Pacific Care, which is a child care referral service. Uh, Charlotte Crowley is a, a health advisor. Uh, Vancouver Island Compassion Dogs is also operating out of Qualicum Commons. It's really grown into a hub of, um, as I say, a multitude of services and a real wide age range. So we have everything from preschool services, uh, children, youth, and again with the seniors, uh, first aid classes, we have seated fitness uh, for seniors with disabilities or mobility problems. We've come a long way in the last year. Um, the fact that we started off with a closed school, which nobody was really very happy with, um, we've been able to grow from that and come together in a different way and uh, that's what we're celebrating today. Julie Chadwick is a reporter and the arts and entertainment editor here at the Nanaimo Daily News, responsible for putting out the hub in Thursday's paper every week. Certainly no shortage of material. Do you describe Nanaimo's cultural life Pretty vibrant, pretty full? Yeah, I would say it's really vibrant. What are super, some things that are happening? Super wide variety of stuff. I think like this time of year kind of makes my head hurt a little bit. Because <laughs> it is, I mean, fall is launch season yeah. for a lot of theater stuff, right? I think as well, like especially when you're covering stuff, there's always a huge amount of things happening that people really want to get covered. So I think that perhaps like one of the biggest challenges in terms of arts and entertainment stuff is for promoters to get the audiences out. Of course, like the weather is kind of getting colder, so people are more interested in like getting in, watching theater and watching film and that kind of thing. But there's always a lot of competition in terms of getting the audience. That's probably one of the biggest challenges in Nanaimo. Like there's a lot of people, but just getting everyone out to all the different shows. Right, so the audiences are fairly small because there is such a wide range yeah. of offerings and, and having to choose, we can't get to it all, right? Yeah. I think like one of the interesting things this year, this season, is the return of Western Edge with a lot of their new stuff. Um, previously they announced that they were sort of folding and that was kind of like a big loss for the community and that made me wonder about like what was happening in terms of theatre in Nanaimo. Like is it, you know, is this something that is an indication of, of things sort of on the, the downturn? But so their return is really interesting in terms of um, showing that there is actually those audiences. I just went out to Making Tracks this past weekend and um, it was a packed house. Oh, that's which, great. Yeah, which is a great indication of, of, you know, the fact that there is those audiences out there, so. I think it says a lot too that the art gallery has gone through um, sort of a reformation. They've amalgamated two locations into one downtown, Emily Carr, original works in Nanaimo for the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So it's not just theater, it's the visual arts too and the music scene really seems yeah. to be growing. I was just talking actually with, um, for a story, doing like some of the fashion stuff that we do in the paper now. I was talking with Russ Moreland at the Electric Umbrella and he was saying like one thing that's really interesting in terms of visual arts, but this relates to other things, is that it's hard sometimes for Nanaimo to hang on to really good artists. Like for example, one thing we're covering this week um, is that uh, there's some Canadian Folk Awards that have just uh, come out, some nominations, and there's a couple people from Nanaimo that have been nominated. So there's loads of talent here, mm -hmm. but at the same time we sometimes experience a drain where people are kind of gets a bit of a name in Nanaimo and then go to bigger cities to find success. So I think that's also a challenge is that there's been some really prominent visual artists and musicians in town but then they end up going and so for him like running a gallery he said sometimes like he wants to promote the local artists but a lot of the best ones have moved away and so like always having to find those those new things to mm -hmm. promote mm -hmm. can so be when difficult. When you're putting together the hub on Thursdays you're looking for a pretty good mix of mm -hmm. of what? What do you include in that? Um, I look for visual stuff, film stuff, theater, um, literary stuff as well, like we sometimes forget that too, but I like Wordstorm every month, they often do, they often bring in really prominent poets and that. Finally, before we sort of wrap up, Fringe Flicks from Theatre One is a film series um, mm -hmm. sort of touring on circuits from festivals mm -hmm. that you wouldn't get a chance to see in sort of mainstream theaters and they bring that in yeah, that and it's well attended. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and that's really important to get those listings out there as well because uh, I think, yeah, for people that want a bit of something other than just the live theater stuff to sort of, you know, sit in the movie theater and get that experience, but then have something different than the usual Hollywood stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to say that there's nothing going on culturally in Nanaimo, I think we agree. There's oh, tons going there's on. There's tons. There's tons. <laughs> it's just a matter of, of seeking it out for yeah. sure. And you can do some of that in Thursday's edition of The Hub with the Nanaimo Daily News. We didn't even mention that I'm a theater group. It is theater season. Everybody's launching everything. <laughs> they go back in the kiln and the ink burns away and the plastic burns away. The iron oxide actually like melts into the top layer of the glades. Makes it kind of fun so I can do anything I want. My name's Paige. I'm uh, the owner of Blackbird Studios. I'm a ceramic artist living on Gabriola. I make a functional line of ceramics that I sell across the country and I'm based here now and most of my work is hand thrown and I do a little bit of mold making. Everything's hand painted, everything's made by me and all the designs and everything. I do deco work and silk screening whole bunch of different kinds of transfer processes to layer all of my images but create a really simple understated piece that can be used every day. This is my first year on the on the arts tour. I'm really excited. I mostly want to meet more of the locals. I've been here for a year but I've been renovating and working on opening the studio for classes so there's a lot of buzz around me opening the studio and I really want to get the community involved and in seeing that we're open and we can have classes now and just uh, start that relationship. We'll have a look at another one of the artists from the 19th annual Gabriola Thanksgiving Gallery Tour later on this edition of Go. As I mentioned, this is the 19th annual. There are 15 new tour artists participating this year. There's a brand new Tour Central as well. You can get more details and catch some of the energy and pick up on the vibe ahead of time online www.studiotour.artsgabriola.ca we're making that switch from arts to sports here's dan marshall welcome to nanaimo clippers rapid fire i'm dan marshall today i'm joined by nanaimo clippers forward charlie borick charlie a lot of guys in the dressing room have nicknames spencer houston is huey kale bennett is benny what's your hockey nickname Ah, uh, well, there's lots of like Chuck, Chaz, Charles, Boric, any, any of the above. Who's your favorite all-time hockey player and why? Favorite all-time is Dotsuk. Uh, I was born in Michigan, so I'm a Detroit Red Wings fan and he's kind of carried the load for the past couple years. Are you a late night guy or an early morning guy? Definitely late night. Early mornings I'm not my best, for sure. Are you a guy that likes to be on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and what's your go-to social media? Uh, probably a little bit more than I like to admit. Uh, probably Snapchat, though, for sure. What's the favorite song on your playlist right now? Uh, Drops of Jupiter by Train. Up to this point, what's been the highlight of your hockey career? Uh, well, it doesn't have to be a sport, but I love to play tennis with a couple of my buddies back home. Uh, it gets pretty competitive, but that's probably my go-to. What do you like best for a pre-game meal? A thing of Tim Hortons, a cup of coffee, and then I have a banana and a Cliff Bar. What's the biggest on-ice hockey blunder you've ever made that, man, it sucked at the time, but you can laugh about it now? My sophomore year, I was playing a, playing a game, was on a breakaway, it was 2-1, and I took, a, I took a slap shot and I missed the net and then they went back and scored. We ended up losing the game, but it didn't really matter at the end of the season. What was your best subject in school? Best subject was probably history, and I think it's history just because I love learning about all the wars and stuff like that, so I've always been a pretty big history buff. That is the Niagara Clippers rapid fire with Charlie Boric. Still to come today on Go, the Raptors up close in Duncan and a harvest feast at Cedars Restaurant and Lounge at the Tynamara Resort.